Hi, this is Kevin from BCH. Uh, today we're going to make a refillable cartridge from a HP integrated cartridge that uh, has a square shape. The integrated cartridges are the cartridges that has a printhead on the bottom and a electronic ribbon on the side. HP makes two kinds of uh, desktop integrated cartridges. One is uh, short rectangle, actually I call it square. I mean, it's not a perfect square, but it's like more squarely than the uh, very long uh, rectangle one. Most of uh, integrated cartridges are square ones, uh, such as uh, 21, 56, 61, 62, 63. Uh, most of the time, they are square. This is what looks inside a HP cartridge. If I have a starter or regular cartridge, there is an interior wall to hold a tiny sponge. This will limit how much ink we can refill. The XL cartridge doesn't have this wall and has a larger sponge. However, the sponge takes about a half of the available space inside the cartridge. In this video, we're going to remove the wall, the sponge, and the glue a special cover with a pressure regulator, and thus make a spongeless refillable cartridge. Let's go over what we need. We need some sandpaper and 100 grit or 150 grit. Personally, I like 150 grit, but uh, because I like so much, we just run out of it. And we need a heavy duty utility, utility knife and do not use those flimsy uh, office knife and uh, get a really sturdy utility knife. And then we'll need some rubber bands and the two is enough. And after that, we need a super glue. Do not use those foam super glues such as Gorilla White. If you decide to use a Gorilla Glue, use the Gorilla Clear or Gorilla Brown. When picking a glue, we'll make sure it's waterproof. Then we'll check its tech-free and the cure time. For example, the Gorilla Clear glue is foam-free, two hours tech-free, and a 24-hour cure. Therefore, we probably will leave it at least 12 hours before using the product. And uh, if we use a super glue, super glue normally is 12, 12 seconds uh, set time. And uh, we'll leave it at least two hours for the cure. And uh, lastly, we need a long nose plier. The special cover can be found at bchtechnologies.com and go to mod kit and uh, you want to select for HP. And then uh, you can find this uh, mod kit for making spongeless cartridge. And uh, HP square means uh, it's a squared kind of HP. There are two parts of the cartridge that need to be protected. One is the printhead on the bottom of a cartridge which needs to be protected from dirt and debris. Another one is the electronic ribbon, which needs to be protected from the overflow of superglue. We can use a piece of saran wrap or clear tape to do the job. Caution, if we use a piece of uh, clear tape, like uh, what, what we're doing now, it will be important to apply the non-sticky side towards the printhead. Otherwise, if the printhead comes in contact with the glue on the tape, the printhead may be damaged permanently. So we put the first piece of tape uh, with the glue set toward us uh, on, uh, on the base. Then, after that, we'll use two more pieces of clear tape to secure the protective piece to the cartridge body as we wrap one piece around the bottom and the one piece around the side.
We'll next use a utility knife to cut the top. This step involves a sharp knife, so we must be careful. Starting from the edge, we use the edge as a pivot and push the knife up and down. Once the edge is open, we'll work on the other edges. Combine the cutting with a little, little bit of prying. Once all the edges are loosened, the cap can be taken off and expose the sponge inside. Important, write down the color sequence of the cartridge. HP makes the same cartridge with a different color arrangements now, and your cover's color-coded plug may be different than the cartridge. We need to match the cover with the cartridge. We won't take the sponge out yet, because we need uh, the sponge to, to protect the printhead from dirt and debris from this step. We'll use a 150 grit sandpaper to sand the top of the cartridge evenly and smoothly. We'll then use a knife to remove the hanging debris. Because we have to glue a top uh, that's airtight, so you have to make sure that you sand every, everything evenly. And here you can see there are uh, th there's uh, still some uh, shiny part on the right and the left, so the uh, so the cartridge is now sanded even. Uh, this is what the final result should look like. You may ask what do we do with those internal walls. So we use a long nose plier to remove those four walls inside. We don't have to remove the walls completely. It'll work as long as the ink can flow freely inside the chamber. Also, be careful, do not uh, break or penetrate the filter, uh, the square filter on the bottom. We'll now wipe or blow out the debris on the top of the cartridge again. After removing the sponge, we suggest cleaning the inside of the cartridge. We can use compressed air or distilled water or tap water. If we see dried ink on the filter, it is a good time to put, un put it under running water and wash it until the filter is clean. After the top is dry, we'll try to fit a cover on the cartridge. We'll do it again and again until we can insert the cover in one take. Remember, you only got one shot to make this perfect, and it has to be airtight. So practice and practice. Practice until you can do this even your sleepwalking. Now is the crunch time. We'll get the rubber band handy, and then we're going to attach the top of superglue. Because we want to seal each compartment airtight, and the inside dividing walls, which are dividing the three colors, uh, those walls are really thin. So we can add a little bit of superglue to the inner grooves of the cover. So we add some horizontally and uh, and some little bit more vertically, form a T shape. We'll apply a generous amount of super glue on the rim of the cartridge. Then the thin dividing wall between the compartments. Make sure you wear eye protection while doing this.
Hold your breath while doing this. Perfect. Wrap it as tight as you can. Then we'll leave the cartridge to cure according to the glue curing time. For super glue, we're going to cure about two or three hours. After double checking the color arrangements, we'll add ink until each compartment is full. Then we'll insert plugs to seal the top. I want to talk a little bit about the unclogging. After we put the cartridge back to the printer, if the printer is working, but the printout is blank or has straps, then the print head is clogged. Uh, traditionally, we can put a cartridge on a priming clip, like this one, and then we suck, it, suck ink from the bottom. We should have seen more inks coming out, so this cartridge is blocked really, really bad. Uh, the second way of unclogging is uh, we uh, we have a piece of uh, red paper towel. Then we wrap around the cartridge with a paper towel, and uh, then we got a uh, vacuum cleaner, and we just uh, force the vacuum cleaner sucking it from the bottom. For spongeless cartridges, we now have a new way of unclogging. Because all the color chambers are sealed airtight, if we did it right, we can blow air into the air hole and push the ink out from the top. This method is easy and effective for minor clocks. However, for the clocks like this big, which the print head is, is clocked rock solid, the air pressure is not going to work because it will either create an ink backflow, or maybe it will, it will blow out the refill plug. Uh, therefore, uh, only use this method if you have a minor clog. Also, you might want to release the pressure inside the cartridge after blowing air by remove and reinsert the refill plug. If we have a clog this big, we should just fill a bowl with a quarter inch or half inch of water and soak the cartridge for 20 minutes or to an hour and then use the vacuum method or use the priming clip to suck it out and then if the result is not desirable just repeat it so you get a major cox removed then you can fine tune it with uh, the, the air blowing technique. This is what it should look like. So we'll blow air to the air hole. And then we can see the air, the, the ink coming out of from the bottom. We give a few seconds, then we remove and reinsert the the, the plug, the refill plug, so the uh, excessive air can be released. We'll clean the electronic ribbon and then insert the cartridge into the printer and uh, do a print head cleaning using the printer's function. The refill cartridge will not show the new ink level. The printer should work until the printer thinks the ink is depleted. We'll simply click the OK button to acknowledge the ink depletion and keep using the printer. The printer should work forever now. We'll pay attention to the printout. If a color is fading, we'll take the cartridge out and add more ink. If the cartridge is printing in stripes, we'll take the cartridge out and uh, unclog it using our three meth methods that we showed. For all the warning messages like low on ink 
or ink depletion and just click OK to bypass it. We just made the HP cartridge great again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at bchtechnologies.com or locally at Greensboro, North Carolina. Thank you for watching. Enjoy printing. Cheers.